Okay, I think we are live. Hi, friends. Hello, everyone. Sorry, we are a couple minutes late. My computer had died while I was at work. And thank goodness I have two chargers because this one no longer works. And I just oh, discovered no. that right now when I tried to plug, up, plug it in oh, and no. it wasn't charging. And so I went and got my other one and immediately everything was working. So bye-bye to that charger. <laughs> I apologize for the delay. I like to be on time. So it, it stresses me out to not be on time. Ah, But hey, <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Are people coming? Yeah. Yeah, we got people here. Six, 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 how, are you, how are you seeing? Um, uh, on the right hand side, there's yeah. two options private chat and comments. Oh, go to comments. Go to comments. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> Clearly, I'm <laughs> I need a refresher on StreamYard. <laughs> hello, hello, everybody. Uh, we are so thrilled that Middle Grade March is here today and we get to have a live on day one. I don't know. If you I don't think we have. This might be the first time that March 1st has... Oh, I'm not wearing my new logo. I have my I'm wearing, I'm wearing logo the vintage. See? Hold on. Oh. Underneath. I love it. I, I just have my sticker. Oh, look at that on your water bottle. Yes. I love it. I hope everybody is ready for a wonderful month. It's going to be so good. Um, I think the first thing that we need to do is officially welcome and introduce Jenna. Yay! Yay! Hello! This is <laughs> Jenna. Jenna was one of my, and my, Katie's too, like early friends on BookTube. Jenna used to have a BookTube channel, Jen the Librarian. So if you guys have been around for a long time, you might remember Jen. Jenna from there. Um, I think we all started our channels around the same time. Very similar time. Yeah. We did in 2016, <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah. 2016. Yeah. Is when I started too. So we, Katie and I have known Jenna for a long time and then Jenna has traveled and done different things and lost contact a little bit. We've reconnected recently and then she reached out and was like, Hey, if you guys need anything, any kind of help with middle grade March, we're like, well, <laughs> actually, <laughs> well, I know. we have the job for you. <laughs> and so she has graciously and wonderfully agreed to kind of spearhead our Instagram part of middle grade March and join our team. And we already love it. <laughs> we love having you, Jenna. So do you want to give us just like a little, like who you are and what do you do and Sure. Um, yes. So um, my booktube channel name used to be Jen the Librarian because I am a children's librarian. I've worked on and off in public libraries, specifically with kids um, since 2013. Um, and now I am also a currently a full-time children's librarian. So yes, that's going to help me uh, come up with some more books to read at, at, during middle grade March for sure. Um, and yeah, I live in uh, Virginia with my husband, Daniel, who is my best friend. And I'm also a writer, too. So that's basically me in a nutshell. Yay. I love it. Yeah. Oh, um, somebody said that they were at a Carrie Underwood concert. Jennifer? Yeah. <laughs> she was going to come tonight, that's but she's awesome. going to the concert instead. That's really fun. Uh, yeah. It's a pretty good excuse. I, I guess so. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> I suppose. <laughs> See where your priorities are. I love it. Um, secondly, Katie, your reel today, I must have watched it 25 times throughout the day. It's so fun. I've been showing people. <laughs> this is my friend. I know her. I know her. I had, I was struck with inspiration in the middle of the night. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's the way I, strikes. you know, that's the way uh, Instagram and me operate these days. I, I only do Instagram when the inspiration strikes. I love it. Um, yeah. And I woke up at 3.30 this morning with that little like sound clip stuck. It was like an earworm in my head. And I was, and at first I couldn't remember where it was from. It was like, where are those words from? Where is it from? And then I was like, screaming at you on Marco Polo, I was like, Finding Nemo. And I then well, I think I when, I remembered, when I remembered the entire quote, when I remembered um, the end where she, where Peach says, 
um, the tank is clean. And I was like, oh, Finding Nemo. Okay, Finding Nemo. And so then I had to like figure out how to do the clip. Anyway, it was really fun. And uh, thank you for enjoying it because <laughs> it's always more work than I anticipate making a reel. Sure. Yeah. I've yeah. never made one, so I don't know. <laughs> but I can imagine. Yes, it was it was quite amazing to um, wake up to this morning. <laughs> it was so fabulous. Oh, it brought me a lot of joy today. <laughs> um, awesome. So we're going to have lives every Wednesday this month, and they will always be at this time, 9 p.m. Eastern. Uh, the Tonight is the first, and the third week and the fifth week, they will be here, where you already are. And then next week and the fourth week, they will be on Instagram, um, on the Middle Grade March channel, on inst channel page account account, account. account. <laughs> over at middle grade march on instagram um, we'll have the lives there uh so we do have a little bit more freedom when it's on youtube because we don't have a time limit on instagram we're limited to an hour but we're gonna try except maybe with the book discussion we're gonna try each week to kind of keep it to an hour and honor your time and honor our own time and because we're meeting lots and lots so we are just tonight going to just be excited that middle grade March is here. So the four of us are going to share some of our all time favorites and we want to hear some of your all time favorites in the comments. And then also we're going to talk about which ones this month that we're kind of the most excited about reading. Did you guys like stack up your fave? So can I give a little caveat because I don't have my pile of favorites with me because a lot of my favorites are all packed away still. Oh, Amanda. Amanda. <laughs> I literally did I not. Like, think about I have it. To, so this is my stack of favorites. I mean, you know, and then here's my, oh, I got to turn this around. Here's my stack of what I'm starting with and excited about. Oh my goodness. Okay. I love it. Yeah, I did not uh, bring a stack of my favorites, but I did bring my stack of um, books that I'm most excited about. Okay. I always have such a hard time. grab those pretty quickly. Deciding favorites. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's so there's always a handful that I can reach for and be like, yeah. this is for sure a favorite. Yeah. I have some favorites. I don't know that they're my all-time favorites. Some of them are, but. Yeah. And then I have. I like went through my show. I was just like really quick glance through my shelves and I was like, okay, that one. Okay, that one. Okay, that one. Nice. And then I looked and I'm like, I have enough. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Lo and um, behold, I miss some, and people are going to be like, "What about?" Da -da 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 -da. And I'll be yeah. like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." yeah. Um, <laughs> before you asked, "Do you still have your YouTube channel?" Do you mean me or Jenna or both of us? <laughs> so I am re. What's the word? Revamping. Re re revamping, not revamping, because it's going to be the same old me. Restart. <laughs> restarting yeah. i'm coming back and i've posted a few videos i'm really hoping okay guys hold me accountable that's the best way to do it like nag me and be like hey because often i'll throw a video, video and then i just video. don't edit it so <laughs> you have to be like katie edit that video get it posted i love it <laughs> yeah i i technically i still have the channel it's the name is now jenna reads and writes but i haven't posted on it in literally three years. I have kind of plans to do it eventually, but I've just been having more fun on Instagram. Um, yeah. Hence my new role in middle grade March. So. <laughs> <laughs> but I do love YouTube. I spend way too much time on YouTube. I love it. Um, and I will say, I will link everybody in the description. I didn't, I did it while I was at work today. So I was like, squeezing things in between nap times and steps. Um, so I will put everybody's channel links and Instagram links in the description when we're finished. So yep. that will be coming. So check back after. Yep. And if you have Instagram in the link in the bio of the middle grade March Instagram account. Oh yeah. Everybody's stuff Everybody. is linked mm -hmm. at right that there. link. So. All right. If you had to pick like the ultimate <laughs> one you're just going you're just going for the jugular there I am. I am if you had to pick one what would it be like top of your brain 
Oh, well, Matilda, that's a great choice. That is a great choice. This Why? Is like one true love. I want true love. I love it. That's up there for me. That's one of my favorites. I think this is a book that transcends time. <laughs> what? Sarah said, Krista can't pick one. Who's she kidding? <laughs> yeah, I'm just kidding. I'm like, Krista, you know you're going to have to answer this yourself, right? <laughs> no. But I just, I feel like this book transcends time. It transcends age. It trans. it's like, it's the book for everybody because it has just a tiny hint of like magic in it, mm -hmm. but it's not a fantasy book, mm -hmm. but it's like, I just. It's I a contemporary it. with a little magic, which are actually like my favorite kinds of middle grade. Yeah. Yeah. And there's just so much good in this book. I just, I love it. It's probably my favorite. Very bookish too, which yes, it is very bookish. Yeah. yeah. And the audio book with Kate, is Kate, it Kate Winslet? Winslet narrates it and it's perfection. I didn't know about that. I'm going to have to fix it. You can listen it's to really it in a good. day. Easy. It's so good. My husband listens to it on long car rides just over and oh. over. No way. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Steve listens to Kate Winslet reading Matilda. <laughs> That's oh my so goodness. I love that so much. Doesn't that just make you, just gives you a whole nother side to Steve. I love it. Oh my That's word. hilarious. I'm sure he's going to be so proud that you shared that with the world. <laughs> he is a big old nerd and he doesn't care. I love it. I love oh, it. Oh man. Dana, how about you? Okay. So, uh, okay. I instantly thought mm, The Hobbit. Because even though a lot of people don't, wouldn't consider this middle grade, so it might be cheating a little bit, but Tolkien originally wrote this as a children's story for his children. So I'm going to go ahead and say that it counts. I can officially <laughs> I even say it, that. Yeah. I first read it when I was like a middle grade reader. Yeah. yeah. It's meant to be a children's book. I, yeah. I say yes. Okay. Awesome. I just, it's not only my favorite middle grade, but it's also my favorite book of all time. If I could only choose one. Nice. Do that you like it? Like that. You're like Lord of the Rings. Saying that. If yeah. I had one I'm favorite confident. book? No. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yep. The Hobbit for sure. If I had to pick one. Um, yep. It's your there desert island book. book. You haven't read enough books, obviously. <laughs> Oh, no, I love The Hobbit. <laughs> I'm joking. I, it's I nothing against The Hobbit. It's the fact that you're able to pick one. Oh, I'm just no. so dumbfounded don't, by don't that. Don't get me wrong. I have a list of five, but if I, Krista told me I had to pick one, so I picked one. Um, <laughs> I will also mention. She's playing by the rules. I, I will also. Now she's like, I'll also keep going with more. Here, okay, you want more? I'm going to give you more. So we also no, have. Okay, I'm not saying. Here. Here's my thing. Here's my time out, time out, time out. My thing was, I was surprised you could pick one favorite book of, like, one book. Like, yeah. I can pick, like, one middle grade or one this or one that. Mm -hmm. They're not all going to be the same book. Like, to say I have one favorite book, period? No. <laughs> 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 it's a good problem to have. It really is. Mm -hmm. And I'm not trying to say you don't read enough books. That's not what I'm trying I to say. I know you are. Reading is not a competition. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, but I also want to say Anne of Green Gables, of course. Um, you and... took that right out from under me. <laughs> I know. I knew you were going to say it. Um, also, The Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman. Love. Love that book. I read that because of you. And Did Amulet, you? the graphic novel series I read because of you. Another great one. Yep. Um, I would probably say Anne or The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Because those are the books that I've reread the most mm -hmm. in my lifetime. Now you have to pick one, Krista. Anne. Well, I'm going with Anne. <laughs> I'm also going with Anne. How can I not? I knew, I knew you would, but I'm like, do I let her say it first or am I going to say it first? <laughs> How can I not say Anne? It has to be Anne for me. Anne of Green Cables. I just reread it, like, coming into the new year. I started in December and finished in January. Mm -hmm. And it just, like, I just smile almost the whole book, except yeah. for that one part that doesn't make me smile. But I just, 
like well, the writing, that one part is also what makes the book so beautiful. Beautiful, a hundred percent. Yeah, and I love that as I've grown, the book has changed like and I now have so much more of a love and appreciation for Marilla that I never did when I was younger mm -hmm. and I just I feel like it has just grown with me and it's yeah. beautiful yeah I love it isn't so it fun that we all picked books from our childhood yeah I think that's the only way you can do like an all-time favorite all it has to be yeah. it, a, a, an all-time favorite has to be a book that has stood the st test of time in your life you know like yeah. that's the way to judge it and yeah. that's Anne for me, for sure. I mean, that's why I chose it to write. Someone just texted me a funny, <laughs> sorry, if everyone can hear that ding. Yeah. That just texted what, me. What is the first, I don't know if I know the first line, Sarah, Sally, I mean, did, are you talking about the best opening line of, of, of what? One of the books that we mentioned, or is that like, or did I just a conversation? Okay. I'm like, I want to know the best opening line. <laughs> best opening line of one of the books we mentioned? Oh, yeah. I want to read Grace of Wild Things, Sally. Yes. So someone was just talking about the Grace of Wild. I actually got it because it was published within the last year. And I was just on a podcast. So I wrote, If though, for those of you who don't know, for Owl's Nest Publishers, who I'm a part of, who I'm, I started, anyway, we wrote, we are doing a classics line and our first classic was Anne of Green Gables that I edited. And um, I was just on a podcast uh, called uh, the Kindred Spirit. Oh, what was it called? Kindred Spirit Corner, I think, or Kindred, either Kindred Spirit Corner or Kindred Spirit Podcast. Anyway, it's really good. You guys should go check it out. Um, not because I'm going to be on it. <laughs> I'm not going to be on it for a while, but um but the, the, the way that they always end the podcast is um, like something that Anne would recommend. Like you have to recommend something that you think Anne would recommend. Oh, cool. And, yeah. And the, one of the hosts recommended The Grace of Wild Things and described it as like the girl who drank the moon meets Anne of Green Gables. And I was like saying, oh, my word, sold. Yeah, my word. I am sold. That is all you need to say to me. I love it. Yeah. It's on my anticipated reads for this first quarter. And all I knew was that it was Anne, but witchy. Yeah. Mm. That is not what got me. Right. No. <laughs> Anne, but witchy. I'm like, mm, I don't know. I know. Same, but. But I... Anne, the girl who drank the moon. Yes, please. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, Sally was talking about the graveyard book. Best first line. Oh, oh. Well, there was a knife. There was a hand in the dark and it held a knife, I think is what it is. Mm. Did you pulling out the first line? I'm impressed. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's been some great people's, I mean, favorites in the in the comments mm -hmm. here. And I, I love these people who are not just choosing one. That's okay. We're going to talk about more anyways. <laughs> Simon sort of. Simon Sword of Sats. I've never heard of that before. I've never heard of that one either. I'm really curious. Simon Echo is Especially also because amazing. those other two are some oh, of my Sword of favorite. Says. Simon Sword of Says. Oh. Simon <laughs> Sword of Says. Oh. Yeah. Still haven't heard of it, but Freak the Mighty and the Westing oh. Game. Oh. <clears throat> the last one. Ooh, I read that a long time ago. Oh, you've already read some, Katie. Look at you going. She started middle grade March early. <laughs> I love it. Always allowed. A hundred percent. I started early too. I didn't. And I already have two books finished. Oh my word. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. And I haven't even started a middle grade book yet. I'm con I am just determined to finish to the finish book. Another book. This is a big list. Secret Garden Until Tomorrow, Mr. Marsworth. Behind the Bookcase. Oh, Small spaces. Okay, all of those except for Behind the Bookcase. I've read and loved. Actually, here's my stack of favorites. Oh, I don't own it yet. I love Cece's Journal so much. But I know these are a lot of these are on my list too. Mm -hmm. Um, Small Spaces is incredible. I love it. It's Everyone so always good. says that. I own it. I need to read it. I just, I adore her writing. It's Catherine Arden, the same 
uh, author as the bear and the nightingale. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which I did love. I've, I love that series. Although I still haven't read the final book in it. I physically read the first book and I physically reading it jumped. I got scared and in I like spaces? jumped. Yes. Wow. I'm like, how does that even happen? Like I it's can see creepy. the words coming. I know what's coming. I just read it last month. And I can't like talk it? about it. I can't talk about it yet because I read you it like if you liked it or not. I did. I did enjoy it. Which was a surprise to me. I wasn't expecting to like it as much as I did. I don't feel like the rest of the series is as strong as the first one. I will The say Small that. Spaces okay. one? Yeah. Yeah. I've only read the first. Keisha might beg to differ with you about that. Like the rest of the series better? Keisha, give it to her. No, she likes book one for sure. That's one of the, her favorites. But she's like, I think she, there was only one that she didn't love. Oh, no, I, I liked the rest of them, but I really liked the first one. I oh, someone just said The was... Wednesday Wars by Gary Schmidt. Gary Schmidt, everything he writes pretty much is an all-time favorite of mine. He's just one of my all-time favorite authors. I love him. I love his writing. I love his books. Oh, so they're so good. All right, let's go ahead. Let's do some more favorites. Not It doesn't have to be an all-time favorite, but what are some others on your list, Katie. Let's see if we have them on ours too. <laughs> okay. Sweet. Yep. I don't Sweet have it. Is on my list. I'm going to, I'm going to name one that's, that might not be on the rest of yours, but maybe it will be. It might be on Krista's. Um, uh, Walk Two Moons. Ooh, that was a good one. Walk Two Moons is, is an all-time favorite. It's, it's actually another all-time favorite. I almost said it, but I have to say Anne, but Wednesday or, um, Walk two, Walk, two Walk two Moons is another one that has stood the test of time for me. It's one I read when I was a kid and I still love it as an adult. And it also is another one that like has all of the elements in that I love in middle grade, but also like just a good book. It's got, it's um, a little bit whimsical. Mm -hmm. It's um, got, it's got like older and the older characters that you love with younger characters that you love. Um, like I love middle grade that features dynamics between the old, an older generation and a younger generation. That's like just buzzword for me. I love that. Or like, what do you, what do you call that? When like a. Yeah. Buzzword. Cross generational. Yeah. Oh, oh. Um, but yeah, cross generational, but yeah, buzzword is what I was anyway. And then also is bittersweet. And I just love bittersweet books. Mm -hmm. Love, love, love bittersweet. I don't books. have, I read Walk to Moon mm -hmm. a couple years ago during middle grade March, like, the second year maybe or the first year i remember when you did i didn't come into it with any of the nostalgia that you bring to the table but yeah. what i remember now most is the grandparents relationship with each other mm -hmm. and i absolutely loved the grandparents in that book oh my goodness yes. yes it was good how about you amanda tell another one i just told all of mine oh you did sweep okay hold on oh being that's such a good series oh. Well, do you want to talk about, okay, talk about those, because talk about those, Amanda. <laughs> <laughs> talk about it. Just talk these, about it. just these ones. Um, okay, <laughs> so the Finding Langston trilogy, Finding Langston, Leaving Lyman, Being Clem by Lisa Klein Ransom. They all take place during or shortly after the Great Migration. So they're historical fiction, and they're just so good. Like this this one made me ugly cry, like ugly cry. It is about a bully and his backstory and why he treats other people the way he does, what's going on in his personal life that makes him as a child act the way he does. And it is so powerful. This is a, this one I feel like is a book for book lovers. Like there's a whole paragraph in this book that just like melted my soul because it's this kid sitting in the library talking about what it's like to sit around a bunch of people reading books and how powerful that is and how just like uh, life giving that is. And then this one is about another one of the kids and is just about um, uh, finding out who you are in your family when you don't necessarily, like his father dies early in the book and it's about him finding his identity outside of being his father because 
he feels like he has to be the man of the house and now he has to take his father's place. And it's about him finding out who he is outside of that. And they're all just so flipping ding dong good. <laughs> Sally, the first one is finding Langston. Yeah, That's finding Langston is first, then leaving Lyman, and then being Clem. And Lisa Klein Ransom actually just wrote another YA book called Four Lamb, and it is also amazing. Love it. Jenna, on the list. Jenna what's another one of your favorites? Um, uh, the Miraculous Journey of Edward Tulane by Kate DiCamillo. DiCamillo. Oh, oh, my goodness. On my stack. I think I read this because of you, too, Jenna, now that I think about it. Lady well, Kate. Was Yes, exactly. I was really excited because when I first, I think when I first mentioned it on my channel, I remember Katie, you were just like, ah, going crazy because um, like, I don't think you and I had ever came across somebody else or not many people anyway, that really, really loved that book. Mm -hmm. um, it's just about a, a China doll rabbit who essentially gets lost and he goes on this miraculous journey trying to get back to his original family and it is just heartwarming and heartbreaking in some parts to just classic Kate DiCamillo. You can't go wrong. Classic around. Kate. Yes. So good. It's so good. And I feel like it is one of her books that sort of flies under the radar, but you know, it it, it's up there with the best of them. It's like, it's up there with um, Despero. Like it's, it's mm -hmm. equally as good. I would argue. Yeah. It's a mm -hmm. good one. I hundred, it's on my stack. I grabbed it. <laughs> <laughs> um, one that I picked that I haven't talked about lately, but I used to talk about a lot is a monster calls by Patrick Ness. Oh, I love that book. This book did me in. <laughs> Uh, it deals with a little boy whose mom is sick and he's trying to process all of that. And at night he is visited by a yew tree, which is kind of in folklore. And the tree comes and tells him stories, all of which kind of help him to process grief and loss and how to deal with. So it goes through anger and blame, like all these different stages of grief in such a very realistic way. Mm -hmm. Um, and I literally closed the book and curled up in a ball and sobbed for quite a while and processed some of my own grief. Um, I have, I, I had lost my dad when I was in college, but I had siblings who were the age of the little boy in here. And so it hit me really hard, <laughs> but I just think books that deal with topics like that for kids is so important. And to let them know that every, I mean, grief is such a universal thing. But anyways, this book is beautiful. And it has these kind of creepy, like dark-ish illustrations. But they're so cool. good, though. It's so the illustrations good. are so good. It's so it's it's just fabulous. It's so good. <laughs> and one the, of, no one of Krista's buzzwords is if a book deals with grief. <laughs> I think, and that, I feel like that book is kind of what kicked off. I'm like, I mm. want more books that talk about how people process grief. Cause it's so, it's such a universal emotion to feel something to feel grief. And yet there are countless ways that people do deal with it. Um, Krista, have you yet read the book? And this is a middle grade book. It's called each little bird that sings. Have you read that book no, yet? No, But I have it on my book. <laughs> I have it. Don't read it. It's got a sky on the cover and it deals know, with it grief. And it's a national book award finalist or something. It has yeah. a sticker on it. Yeah. I know that. Something. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Maybe this is the march that it's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> did you did you mention it in your TBR? Maybe you did. No, I didn't. Oh, okay. No. I have I have two books that are like if I was if I was to read like Katie I have that one and the Bone Sparrow I picked up because you were reading that. I don't even think you loved loved it, but I didn't. Don't read that for if you read like Katie. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I mean, it was good, but it wasn't like a favorite. No, I just I picked it up when you first were reading it because it sounded yes. interesting to me. It, it is interesting. It has a really good premise, but and it's it is a good book. It's just not like my favorite, and it's a night. It's a beautiful cover too. Yeah. I, I kept it. Like it's not like I disliked the book. I didn't. I didn't read it and want to like. But it's also it. Australian, I think, and I. I like. It's, it's a t takes place in a refugee camp yeah. in Australia. 
like yeah. where where people will just admit like they'll just live there for years and years and years yeah, and years. yeah. um glenda dear edward is literary fiction it is not middle grade the main character starts out in like as a 12 year old but he grows throughout the story it's not middle grade uh, but another one I, I really love that I haven't talked about a lot lately is Wish Tree by Catherine Applegate. She is another one of my favorite middle grade authors. Um, she's written quite a bit. I've seen people say this one and the one and only Ivan. Those are probably her two most popular, but she has quite a few. And this one is just really sweet. It's a one sitting. I read it in one sitting during a nap when I, <laughs> a couple of years ago. It has beautiful illustrations about a big oak tree named Red who is placed between who it grows between these two houses and in one of the houses is a refugee family or a, a family. I don't know if they're refugees. I shouldn't say that from another country who gets picked on at school. It's also a wish tree. So once a year people come and hang their wishes on it and you get to meet all the, all the animals that live in the tree that someone in the town wants to cut the tree down. Other people are not wanting that to happen, but it's just a lovely, lovely, lovely little story about acceptance and friendship and love. And it's, so sweet so so sweet agree yeah. i like that one i too. read that because of you yeah i did too i think i read it that same year you read it because oh, you you love so it good. yeah i mean i have like newer favorites all 13 i read last year and oh, it, it will be an all-time so good so good, so good. Other words for home jasmine warga we're reading another one of hers this year all together but i absolutely loved other words for home I did too, and that one's also an amazing audiobook. Yes, it is. I, I is. listened that one on audio, and it was um, really good. Somebody asked what the book was where the girl has to work in the library because she did something wrong. It's called A Kind of Paradise, I believe. Amy Tan, yep. It's very good. War That Saved My Life. Oh, that's on my list for sure. And the follow up, The War, that, the war I Finally Won, is also, oh, they're tied. Good. They're tied so in my favorites. They, that one is one I bring up. Whenever anyone wants, like that's one I recommend almost more than any other book because I feel like it has a little you bit could of. Could read that this year for neurodivergent rep because yeah. that has anxiety, like represents anxiety in kids so well, so, so well. well, yeah, so well. It's yeah. not stated ever that she no. had, like she's no. not like I have anxiety, but she has anxiety. Yeah. But she 100 and probably PTSD too. Yes, yeah. so good. So good. I may end up having to pick that one up. I it's so good. Like, Wait a minute. I, I'm you've just never, like, you've never read it. No, I haven't because I don't gra gravitate towards World War II historical I fiction. Do. I'm just but, like I read a bunch of it a few years ago and then I was just like over it. But honestly, honestly, the only thing that's World War II about it is that she gets sent out to the countryside. There is nothing. It's okay. not really World War II. It's, it's more about her. her. It, the Blitz is not even a part, like it's during that time period, but that is not at all what okay. the story is about. The second so, one is a little bit more World War II. The second II. one does have a little more war. I mean, they talk about a few things. They talk there, about right? it. I mean, it's that's the setting, but you know, she's a kid, so she's not experiencing the war itself. Right. I, I, you know what, because I, I relate to the impulse to distance myself from World War II historical fiction. Um, even though I'll, I still read it and enjoy it, but I say yeah. the words that I, <laughs> that I'm over it. Um, but you have to make an exception for the war that the war okay. that saved my life. Yeah, I will. I, I will. Do. It's so good. Yeah. And then the last, I mean, I have so many that are favorites, but I did want to bring up Brian Selznick because I love Brian Selznick. I just think he's so unique in what That's he does. That's my favorite one of his. By mine far. too. Mine too. They're, they're huge. But they're really quick to read because half of the book is illustrations. And this story in particular has two storylines that come together, but one is completely told in pictures and one is completely told in prose. So, you know, if you're reading words, it's one storyline. And if you're going through the pictures, then it's in another storyline. This is so good. And this one has death characters in it. If that counts as neurodivergence, I guess. Death? No. Not sure. I don't think so. No, definitely but, neuro. I wasn't sure. Technically. Yeah. But yes, um, Wonderstruck is really good. I also did like Hugo Cabre. Those two are my favorite, but I, I like Wonderstruck a little bit better. Yeah. And those are the only ones I've pulled off my shelf. But I mean, I could go get Sweep and The Girl Who Drank the Moon. And so this is the last one that I haven't showed. I love this book. It's another World War II 
historical fiction. But it's dual timeline. So one of the timelines is about a black girl who was adopted by a Jewish family. And she's getting ready for her bar mitzvah. Um, and her like great grandma just dies. And so she gets all of her grandma's books. And one of them's her journal from when she was fleeing. And it like chronicles her great grandma fleeing Luxembourg during World War II and coming to live with a family in the U.S. And so it's like her dealing with her um, identity as an adopted child and all of that. But then also her great grandma. It's just it's so good. it's so good. I, this is another one. I cried all the way through it. So if you can catch a theme with all of my favorite books. They'll make me cry. Amanda, I did did you, also mention, sorry, go ahead. No, that's, did, Amanda, did you see my TBR for March? Yeah, you picked me. I know. I want to talk to you about what books you're going to be reading. <laughs> I, already, I, already, I already filmed my intro for it. And I said, I haven't even told Amanda which ones I read. <laughs> I already have a stack. I have four that are very clearly Amanda made me do it. Books. You could probably have like half of your March could be I really, all really books that Amanda said to read. Half of my TBR, I literally mentioned you in with almost every book on my TBR. It's like, and Amanda loves this book. <laughs> Amanda, <laughs> Amanda read this book last year. And <laughs> well, I'm glad you guys trust me. Hopefully you don't hate any of them. If you don't like them, that's fine. Just don't tell me. I love I them. People. I've never hated any book that you've recommended. So mm -hmm. Um, I, I also could mention the girl that the girl who drank the moon and echo and sweep. Those are my top ones. And I already mentioned Gary Schmidt, but I want to say again, Wednesday, he has a whole, he has like a series that go with, or like companion novels that go with Wednesday wars. And so I loved the ones I loved the Wednesday wars, but the follow-up to that was okay for now. And that one, I think I liked even better. And then he's also come out with at least one more that I haven't read yet, but would love to, but all of them, all of those books by Gary Schmidt take place during the Vietnam war. And, um, and Oh, and if you like the Vietnam War era, then another favorite, and I know someone has already mentioned it here, is Until Tomorrow, Mr. Marsworth. That is another all-time favorite for me. I think I read Until Tomorrow, Mr. Marsworth and The Wednesday Wars in the same year, and mm -hmm. I definitely liked Until Tomorrow better than The mm -hmm. Wednesday Wars. I feel like yeah. if I had read them more spread out, I would have liked Wednesday Wars more. Mm -hmm. but because I read them so close, and I read Until Tomorrow first. Wednesday Wars yes. was okay but but i do have the sequel okay for now i do want to read the. you should read it okay for now i think i mean i love i love wednesday wars and i think i do you know i loved it and i i i never i didn't i haven't read them close together i've read wednesday wars wars more than once and loved it both times but i've only read until tomorrow mr marsworth once and i i didn't read them close together so they live separately in my head yeah. and i loved wednesday wars and I feel also feel a little bit nostalgic for Wednesday Wars because I read it like years yeah. and years ago back when it was first published. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, Gary Schmidt is uh, just an amazing author. Oh, there's a book that I'm reading, my TBR. Um, <clears throat> the Mad Wolf's. The Mad Wolf's Daughter. I'm pretty sure, I could be wrong about this, but I'm pretty sure that... Um, <laughs> Like um, the Beatrice prophecies, I saw somebody said, yeah, uh, by Kate DiCamillo, oh, her newest excellent. one. Yeah, Beatrice. Excellent. Oh, shoot. We um, also, these books that I haven't read yet, but um, Crispin by Avi, oh, yeah, I think, Avi. is a middle, yeah, takes place in the Middle Ages. <clears throat> and then there's a book that I'm going to planning on reading this month, if I can get to it, called The Patron Thief of Bread, which I think is also Middle Ages. <laughs> I am very, very intrigued by that one too. I pass it um, just like walking by the shelves at work all the time. And it, the title alone and the spine, like the, I just, you just stuck very your nose drawn in to it. it. Didn't you? So I, did. I did stick my nose into it. I needed to smell it. 
There's one called The Inquisitor's Tale. I forget who wrote it, but that would be kind of along that time period too. And technically our our group read a few years ago was The Book of Boy, which is during that time too. We didn't love it, but some people do. The librarian who recommended it to me absolutely loves it. <laughs> I mean, there's a, there's probably a reason why it won a Newbery honor, right? Yeah. <laughs> it just yeah. didn't hit the mark for any of us. Yeah. Katie, did you see Gary Schmidt has a new release coming out this year? Yeah. When does it come out? I'm I'm gonna maybe pre-order it right now while we're on the. <laughs> <I love it. laughs> um, there was another question that I had starred. Let me see. Oh, Carl Heisen. Have any of you guys read his? I haven't before? read any of his. Or John Grisham. I, I never know. did. I haven't read those either, actually. I always am intrigued by his covers. His, he has some really cute covers, mm -hmm. but I've never actually picked up any of his books. Now I can't find the comment that said the name of the Gary Schmidt book. The Labors of Hercules Beale. The la Labors of Hercules. Okay. Sniff away, Katie. We all do it, except me. <laughs> yeah, I don't stick my nose all the way in. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not a book sniffer. I don't understand that. How could you not be a book sniffer? I do old books, not new books, though. I, I, have, I, have, a, I have a massive dust allergy, so I do not oh. stick my nose into things like paper. <laughs> oh, no, that's not what I just was going to click. Where was the one? Where did it go? Oh, The Inquisitor's Tale is by... Oh, it comes out in May. What one does? The Labors of Hercules Beale. Yes, I just saw that May 23rd, which that's a big, that's a, I've, I've made, you know what, I've pre-ordered more books this year than I think I've ever pre-ordered. And they're all in like April and May. Yeah. <laughs> Steve is going to be like, why are all of these, why are all of these? Yeah. All right, let's, let's switch to what are you excited to read this month? What are some of your most exciting books on your <laughs> These are the two that yeah. I read today. I read Ode to a Nobody. That's a cool it's a book in verse yeah. with a gorgeous cover. Yeah, it's pretty. That is very, really very good. And then I also read the newest Babysitter's Club adaptation, graphic novel adaptation. So those we are cannot my... keep those on the shelves. They are so popular. Yeah. I found it on the shelf at the library. I was like, I'm going to grab that right now. And then I also started Pender Wicks today. Finally, finally started yeah. this. One of my favorites also. And I'm starting this also. I have Moon Garden out from a Oh, library. yeah. That's another. It's going to be a secret garden retelling in space. Yep. Come on. It's so fun. That's like right up your alley, Amanda. I love it. Yeah. And it's a series. I hope the entire series is classic retellings. Oh, my goodness. Could you imagine? Sign me up. I started... One crazy summer on audio, and I have not picked up anything in print yet. But I am, even though I've heard some people didn't love this as much as they were hoping to, I'm very excited to read it and just see what I think. Because I did love The Girl Who Drank the Moon so much that I have high hopes. And I know that I like her writing style, and I know that some people don't click with her writing style. So I'm hoping that because of those reasons. It's going to be a win for me. I'm hoping. I'm so hopeful. Okay. So here's my recommendation, Krista, because I did read that one last year and I liked it, but you cannot go in thinking it's going to be another The Girl, the girl Who Drank the Moon. Okay. True. Yeah. True. Okay. It's, it's good. It's, it's more didactic than The Girl Who Drank the Moon. Yeah. Like you can see she wrote it with a very clear purpose okay but okay. it's good but uh, and you'll you'll love the you'll love the ogress and you'll love the orphan like it's good yeah. it's really good i know that's what sally just said where did it go she I'm says i want to be an ogress <laughs> <laughs> yeah you'll you'll love i really think that you'll like it krista i really then, i really liked it a lot and then this is my patreon book club book this month um the watsons go to birmingham and this is a katie made me do it book too 1963 it's so Christopher, good. Christopher Paul Curtis. So I'm really good. excited for that. How about you guys? What are you excited for? Oh, and I'm excited for Otter. I don't have, I don't know where it is. Oh, it's in my stack of ones I'm going to start first. There's okay, a lot. Well, 
I, there's a few that I'm really, really excited about. So I should have just grabbed this stack. <laughs> I know. I've got I'm four here this, that I'm really excited this about. This summer is just the most it's adult. Fun. And it's I just, you know, just, just want to give a daughter a cuddle. I just want to so cuddle. Cute. I just love it so much. And I'm not an animal person. So the fact that I'm even like, oh my word. <laughs> <laughs> I'm obsessed. I'm really excited to read the world when the world was ours. Really excited to read this. I and I've been excited. It. I can't believe, honestly, that I haven't read it yet because um, I was excited the moment that Amanda talked about it with us last year. Mm -hmm. I'm also really excited for The Grace of Wild Things. It's so pretty. That. I think I just need to buy that. I uh, I think you probably do. There was – so when, when – um, the co-host of the Anne of Green Gables podcast uh, recommended this. She read a passage from it and I was like, oh my gosh, she it was like, she was embodying Ellen Montgomery. Like it was so beautiful. Nice. I see, I, so many good, I see so many good books in the comments. I'm like, oh my word, you guys are going to have the best reading month ever. <laughs> I know. Jenna, what are you excited to read? Um, a lot. So one of them is uh, 13s by Kate Alice Marshall. And it's supposedly like a spookier story about um, every 13 years in the town of Eden Eld, three 13 year olds disappear. Very interesting. Um, yeah. And there's these friends. I It supposedly has like Stranger Things vibes or something. Um, like these friends are just start like trying to figure out like what's going on in their, in their town. Mm -hmm. um, and then this one I saw on um, our, my library's catalog recently, it's called Ikenga. It's about a boy mm -hmm. who receives um, these powers from the superpowers. When, cause his, okay. So his dad, unfortunately was killed the boy is 12 years old. And then one night he receives the gift of the Ikinga, a magical object that enables superpowers. Hmm. So figuring out what, like what really happened to his dad while also receiving these powers. Um, and then one that I haven't seen, uh, heard very much of, but I just saw it at the library, uh, Skyborn. It's just, it's a new series about these kids that are born with wings and there's different um, factions of them, like um, uh, sparrows, jays, falcons, and there's like this elite group called the Gold Wings that everyone wants to join. But our main character is only a sparrow, and so she's not worthy or something like that. So that looks interesting too. Um, and one more. This one is probably one of the most beautiful covers I've ever seen, The Language of Spells. Have you guys read this one? No. No, but I've seen it. it. It's so pretty. I don't know anything about it. <laughs> but I just got it because of the cover, and I saw it um, around, I guess the main character is a dragon, or another main character is a little girl, and they have to solve a mystery in Vienna. Oh. I assume this took place in a different world. But anyway, those are ones that are at the top of my stack. Very cool. Katie, did you say, oh, you said when the world was ours. I just wanted to say in the uh, Discord group, Katie McNeese is here in the comments. And I don't think you guys have been in the Discord much or at all, but she came up with a stack of 16 for each prompt. Holy. And then March Madness style, narrowed it down to four for each prompt. So then yeah. she'll have a total of whatever that is, 20, right? 20 books on her actual TBR. Um, and I just thought that that was so cool. And she shared kind of what her questions were that she asked herself, like, have I read this author before? Is this continuing a series? Like, so she just came up with 16 that interested her for each prompt. And then that's amazing. Was, Isn't that so that cool? is so cool. How so long... Katie, I have to ask how long it took you to come up with 16 yes. books for each prompt. <laughs> I'm putting the um, the link to the Discord in the comments. Again, this will make my community post link negligent. Like, I'll have to take that one down because once you get a new link, it 
erases the old links, whatever. But if you're Another not in the Middle Grade Arts Discord, I, put, I just put the link in the comments, Pam. Oh, she already read Out of Her Mind. <laughs> yeah, I love that book. It's such a good book. So another book, just I am, I know I already held this up, but I'm really excited to read this because partly because it gives me, when I read the premise, it gives me sweep vibes. It oh, cool. totally feels like a sweep book because um, one of the characters is the a gargoyle. It gives me Oliver of vibes. The musical sort of Oliver, Oliver too, but like I, it's like a like a, a gang, a street gang on the kids of kids, which remind me of the chimney mm -hmm. sweeps. Sure. And then the gargoyle reminds me of Charlie. the the of Charlie. Yeah. I mean, I don't think I don't think that the gargoyle will probably interact as much as Charlie did, but yeah. These were the other ones I brought down that I am super excited to start. Adam 2, which is a sci-fi. Is that a follow-up to the No, Orion it's a completely Christmas? different book. Okay. It's a completely different book by the same author as Orion Lost, which I've read and loved. But I've had this for a while, and I need to read it. Maisie Chen's Last Chance. I have heard. Oh, yeah. Really I have heard good things. I know. And it takes place in Minnesota. Guys, I need to read this. So, um, and it won a Newberry Honor. And then The Thing I'm Most Afraid Of by Kristen mm -hmm. Levine takes place during the Bosnian War. And I've been wanting to read this for so long. I have, too. That's on my, that's on oh. my PBR card. Um, Katie just said it took her a while to come up with 16, but she likes to do that. Gives her joy. She just started an Instagram. Cool. But you have to check out. Yeah. It's just fun to see. <laughs> um, I have a couple. I, I'm really excited for Alone. This is a sci-fi dystopian. It's more like dystopian. This girl mm -hmm. wakes up and everybody has disappeared and she now has to survive. So it's a bit of a survival story. It's also written in verse. So even though it's chunky, I know it'll be a fast read. You'll read um, it quick. I went on a dystopian kick a few years ago and I feel like it's been a while since I've read anything. Like I did all the YA ones and station 11 and I had this kick of when I was reading that type of book and it's been a while. So I'm just really excited to kind of get back into some of that. I also, Amanda gave me this for our Christmas book exchange. My mom has read it and loved it. It's you about a it. school, it like takes place in a school, the girl who has um, dyslexia. So this is my neurodivergent first one for that. And then my first Sky and Sea book is going to be a Lauren Wolf. Oh, yeah. I that, love her. That's on both of our TBR. Yeah, I'm excited to read that one a lot. I am too. Kind of a girl a abandoned, a abandoned as a baby in a boat, washed up onto this island off the coast of Massachusetts, which I'm like, burr. <laughs> Who's <laughs> living on an island off the coast of Massachusetts? <laughs> but I'm excited for that one. Um. Let me see. Has anyone read Troublemaker? I'm not familiar with Troublemaker. No, I've not. I have a Lauren Wolk on my stack here too. Um, Echo Mountain. Oh, I liked that one. I want to read that one too. I've never read any Lauren Wolk and I know I'm going to love her. Red Wolf Hollow. I have not yet read Wolf Hollow. Mm. And she has a new one that either just came out or is it's coming a out. Sequel. It it's already came out. It's a sequel to Wolf Hollow. So I really, I have, I have it. It's a story of my life. I have it on my shelf. So I just never really <laughs> but I yeah. always say, that's what I say about every book. I have it. <laughs> I know. Yes, Jamie. Yes. The goal is 31 books in the month of March. And I have a video coming out tomorrow that are 10 tips to read a book a day. If you want. Ooh, I need Join those. Me. Join me. <laughs> Fun. Okay, what are you, what did you start, did we all say, I know, Amanda, you said you finished two. What are you, what are you starting with or picking up first? I don't know if we even said that at the beginning. We should have started with that. <laughs> and then we'll kind of wrap it up for today. I think, I think I might pick up this one first, but that could change. I haven't picked it up yet because I want to finish the book I'm reading, but. You're, you have a carryover from February. I do. Sorry. Although, you know what? Maybe I should read this one first because you guys know me and I my eyes are always bigger than my stomach and this one fulfills more than one prompt. There you go. So I yeah. should probably do this do one. Yep. I'm doing that 
end reading Wild Oak first um, because it fulfills four out of the five. I love as it. soon I love as it. I read this, I just, I'm going to feel so accomplished. <laughs> and I, I read, it. I did start reading it today, but I only read the prologue and a couple of paragraphs on page one, but I did start it. Nice. And it, it counts. I'm already hooked. Read, like, read the, oh, we should all read the first line of the book. Okay. Book okay. Up. That's a great idea. Wow. I got really excited. <laughs> Um, <laughs> you are a very, you're a pretty like calm, wow. even cool person. You are Jenna, a calm, so that was like present. maybe the most okay, yes. enthusiastic I've ever heard you. <laughs> it's just, it's really, it was so beautiful. Okay, so do you want the first line of the prologue, or do you want the first line of chapter one? No, let's do the prologue because it's prettier. Okay. <laughs> okay. Wild oak forest was whisper still. Ooh. Nice. And whisper still is like hyphenated. Ooh. I'm going to read another one. Spider webs glistened in the half light dipped in frost. Mm. Yeah. I'm going to like it. I'm going to like it. I already know. Mm -hmm. I started the audio last night of One Crazy Summer. I will finish this before the end of the day. And the, the first line is not very exciting. Good thing the plane had seatbelts and we'd been strapped in tight before takeoff. <laughs> that's a solid, I think that's a solid first yeah. line. Yeah. Gives you the setting right away. I just, I love, up. I love the attitude. Look at those girls. They are fierce. Oh, they have I attitude too. I listened to that yeah. one on audio. I love it. So I'm really enjoying it. Yeah. I'm, I only have, I think, 30 or 40 minutes left of the audio. So oh, I will definitely yeah. finish this tonight. Yeah. Um, it's so, it's it's fun. And I probably, will, all three are on script. It's a trilogy. I'll probably read all three of them this month. Yeah. <laughs> Just to kind of knock out the whole trilogy. We'll see. Amanda, what did you, what are you, well, you already read two. Yeah. Maybe I'm going to do Moon Garden because that's the one I have right in front of me. Nice. Um, second month, 2448. I peer through the door at the lone empty seat in the classroom, my empty seat. Mm. That's the one that I'm most excited for you to read so I can like hear your thoughts on yeah, it. It's the one I'm most too. intrigued by on your TBR. All right. This is the first, the first sentence of the prologue. My name is Crow. <laughs> <laughs> womp womp. <laughs> Hello, Crow. When I, was a baby, when I I'll read the second one. When I when I was a baby, someone tucked me into an old boat and pushed me out to sea. There you go. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited to hear what you think about that one. I'm excited to hear what you guys think about all the books you're gonna read. Where is every single one? <laughs> That's a good first. Long, one. That is a good long first in a junkyard. Oh, I love that. What book is that? What book are you starting with again? Is that the John Tilton one? I was thinking that. Oh, yeah. I do have it right here. Oh, yeah. this I'm excited to read this one, too. This was written by one of my Instagram friends, John Tilton, who is just such a lovely person. And this is his debut. I love the cover so much. It's mm -hmm. gorgeous. Yeah, it's really nice. And I got it signed. Nice. Amy, that was from Moon Garden. And that is the first line of the John Tilton one. That's it is. She didn't belong in a junkyard. That's it. Oh, that's so good. Please return to the lands of luxury is the name of it. I'm excited. Very cool. So I'm so excited to hear next week how things are going for everybody. We will be on the uh, Middle Grade March Instagram for our live next Wednesday. And then we'll be back here the week after that. And then we'll just carry on. <laughs> uh, we don't. Yeah. Yeah. And that's all. <laughs> Thank you guys all for hanging out with us. I yeah. can't even believe how many books were mentioned in the comments. There was like no yeah. way. We did not keep up with the comments. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. I tried. <laughs> Um, Jenna did a great job trying to write down the title. Bless you, Jenna. Bless you. Thank you. There's there's just so many so many good ones, and I'm sure there will be more to share by next week. <gasps> Co oh, Kelly, that I love I love that first line. What from Layla and the Blue Fox? 
Look them in the eyes, but don't, oh, where'd it go? It just goes. Look them in the eyes, but don't stare. Don't blink too much. Smile, not with teeth, with your eyes, but don't squint. <laughs> That's a good first line. Yes. Who Very is the solid first line. Again, it's the same as Julia and the shark. Um, it's a UK author, I believe. Um, and I love the illustrations. I definitely need to get my hands on those. They may or may not be in a cart from Blackwell's already. I just haven't pushed purchase yet. <laughs> 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 this All is right. one of our favorite things to do so we're so yes, happy that is. everyone came it really is oh, it's so yeah. fun so yeah, my, my cheeks hurt i know from <laughs> smiling it's so exciting so happy reading everybody and oh there's the author here in millwood hardgrave yes we will we will see you on our videos and on our middle grade march instagram and on our own instagrams all the jazz we'll talk to you throughout the week but Happy reading, and we will be live with you next Wednesday. Bye. Oh, Jenna, don't go. You don't go anywhere, Jenna. <laughs> okay. <laughs>